Okay, so you've got the sizes of pianos. Um, now, one of the main things we look for, everybody calls us on a regular basis looking for to sell old pianos or sell something they've got. And they mean well, but they always call and say that they've got a, a nice piano, a beautiful piano, whatever adjective they'd like to use. And they've taken really good care of it, they say, and they're just not using it and they want to sell it. Without trying to scam you, well-meaning people, what they really mean is that they have a piano that they've dusted and the dog hasn't chewed the leg off of it, but it's been neglected. Kind of like if you have a car and you don't change the oil in 10,000 miles or 50,000 miles or pick the number, the longer it goes between the oil changes, the higher the chance it has of, of failures, right? Uh, and the piano is the same way. So the first thing that we ask those people on the phone, uh, and you should be asking, is when was it last tuned? doesn't matter if they say, oh, it sounds fine. A good piano shouldn't sound bad even if it hasn't been tuned in a while. What, the, what you want to know is it had regular maintenance. Yearly tunings are considered bare minimum. If you get on the, on the internet and you look up the Tuners Guild, they'll say four times a year. But pianos are supposed to be tuned regularly. If you let them go too long between tunings, it messes up the strings. It, it, it creates problems and shortens the lifespan of the piano. So if you don't know anything else about pianos and you're looking for a piano, find something find that looks like, looks like something you want in your living room. That's important. But find something that's been tuned regularly. If it hasn't been tuned regularly, and you're going to run into a lot of them like that, now you have to start getting technical. You have to look at several different features and functions and decide if they're in good shape or not. And I can give you some basics of what to look for. If you get into something that's too complicated or you want help, I would suggest you call us or a local tuner. Have them come and look at the piano and tell you what shape it's in. Because I have seen way too many times people pay money for a piano, haul it home, and then find out that it's got some major problems and they have to spend a lot of money to make it work and they just throw it away. So, first we're going to look at, or well, the things we're going to look at, soundboards, pin blocks, uh, strings, and then the action. The four basic things, three of those are most important, but four things to look at when you're looking at a used piano that hasn't been tuned regularly and you need to consider whether it's worth money or not. Okay, we're going to start with soundboards. The soundboard is a thin piece of wood, less than a quarter of an inch thick. A good soundboard is made out of solid spruce and it runs the whole back frame of the piano. This soundboard runs from back in here over to here, top to bottom, and it is so thin that if you had it out of the piano, if I had it in my hands, I could just break it. Uh, to give it some strength, they put ribs on it. Now, I should point out that, that Good, good soundboards, I said, are made out of solid spruce. This one's not a solid spruce soundboard. This is a laminated soundboard. still made out of spruce, but it's basically spruce plywood. And it is a poorer soundboard, and one of the easy indicators here, one of the, one of the ways to tell, is that the grain is running this way, not perpendicular to these ribs. If they're really trying to stop the thing from splitting, they put the ribs on perpendicular to the grain. So this one behind me here is a solid spruce soundboard. This is actually a laminate soundboard. <clears throat> Some of the newer ones, they still use laminates, but they put the grain at the right direction and it's harder to tell. Laminate soundboards are, are poorer because the sound doesn't travel through them quite as well. They're not terrible, they're, they're decent, but they're not as good as a solid spruce soundboard. So when you buy any expensive brand, you buy a Steinway, you buy a Charles Walters, uh, you get solid spruce soundboards. Uh, let's see here. The soundboard, the function of the soundboard is to amplify the sound of your piano. So if you had a piano and you took the soundboard out of it, the piano would still play, you'd still have to tune it, the notes would still work okay, but you'd have to put the ear, your ear up against the cabinet of it to hear it. And I'm going to demonstrate here, this is my tuning fork. I'm a piano technician and this is out of my toolkit. Here's what a tuning fork sounds well, well, just by itself. And here's what the soundboard does. It amplifies that little sound. Okay? And so the strings on the other side of the soundboard are attached to the soundboard, and when you play it, that piece of wood amplifies the sound so that you can hear the piano. A good soundboard has an average lifespan of 60, 50, 60 years typically. 
And what they do, they're glued all the way around the edges and they dry out. And so when a soundboard gets old, it dries, it shrinks a little bit. It's glued all the way around the edge. It can't come off the edges, or it shouldn't, <laughs> unless it's something really wrong. And so what it does is it pulls apart as it dries, it shrinks. And these are all good soundboards. But you'll look, and, 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 and on a bad one, you'll find a crack that runs underneath the sand, the, these, these ribs. And sometimes you can feel it, sometimes you can just see it. But, but that crack is kind of like a blown speaker, if you find one. Uh, if you're familiar with, with stereos or, or something with a blown speaker, it still plays, still works okay. If you turn the volume down, uh, you may not notice it, but the louder it gets, the more distorted it gets. And the soundboard, if it gets a crack in it, will do the same thing. So at some certain volume or in some certain area of the piano, you'll get a buzzing vibration, typically. And that's, that's what the crack in the soundboard does. So that's something to avoid. It can be fixed, but it's very expensive to fix it correctly. So if a piano has a cracked soundboard, you have to make a decision. Is it cheap enough to still make it worthwhile to get? Or is that a critical part that's going to say, oh, forget it, I want a piano that's in better shape than that? Soundboards. Next, we'll look at uh, strings.